Hey guys, we're going to do a, uh, what might be the last shave that I get to do with this WR2 from Wolfman. It's a head that the gracious HD Shaves has let me borrow and try for a little while. You can see it's got an open comb on one side, solid bar on the other, and that means we call it a dual comb head. 0.75 is the lowest gap I've managed to try, and thanks to him, I was able to find out that that is my favorite gap so far. And I find it fully strong enough and efficient enough to take down multiple days of growth easily, comfortably. I could easily use it as a daily shaver. It's not too smooth at all. Also, I think this is my first time trying this Briar Brush Works. Not Briar Brush Works. Um, bristle, bristle Brush Works from Jeff Huck. And it's a three band knot. Uh, maybe it's a high mountain white, maybe it's a silver tip, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and uh, I had another of his from kind of a similar era, um, this guy right here, that I found out was a high mountain white. Its tips look a little different. Um, this one looks, these tips on that purple brush look a little brighter, so it could be a different knot. Anyway, we'll see. It would be nice to know what to call it, but... We'll just call it a badger brush. Uh, the other stuff, we're going to put a nasset. It's about time that I put one of my favorite blades in this razor before I send it back to HD Shaves. And so I'm going to put a nasset. It's had about 10 uses on it um, on the shave today. And then I had this wonderful L'Occitane container, aluminum type container. I had it hanging around for quite a while and I wanted something cool to put in it. A hard soap, probably not a crope, and I did find that with the Bulgari puck. It's a hard puck. Its, it's performance is pretty good from what I recall. I've used it a few times. Uh, something makes me come back to these hard pucks. Um, not the best um, uh, performance, but very good. And the scent, Man in Black, is the scent here that it's patterned after their cologne of, and I really like it. So that's why we're doing this one, and this is the last. This is the last in the series that I started doing back when I realized that my nose was gone because of COVID. I couldn't smell my own self in the bathroom. I couldn't smell anything. It was the weirdest thing, but you don't really notice it too much. Um, I mean, it's pretty easy to live without a sense of smell, uh, I found. Um, I would definitely miss it if it was permanent, of course, but uh, hoping that it would come back. It wasn't too bad. Um, but, uh, and so what I did decided to do was I picked things like uh, uh, Velabra and CBL and Van Ule and uh, Gold Docks and DR Harris and, uh, and some other uh, uh, Cold River Soap Works, um, uh, some other soaps, uh, Dapper Dragon, that I, um, I didn't use very much because the scents that were in there were not that um, enticing, but I thought the base would be worth a revisit, and uh, and so I figured while my while I'm nose blind, let's use those up. And I put it out for the voting, and you guys voted, and so I worked it in the priority of of how you guys voted. And this is the last one, the Men in Black from Bulgari. Nobody really, uh, just, only a few people wanted to see this one get used, and, and that's okay. Um, all right, so it's a cologne type smell. It's fresh. There's nothing super bitter about it. Um, it's not musky. Uh, I, I, I just really enjoy it. It's a hard product. It looks, I'm sure they contracted out with somebody to make it. And uh, it seems to be somebody who does a good hard puck soap. I'm happy with it. I did change the handle, HD Shaves. Uh, just to shave with it without the one that he sent. He sent along this aluminum Gorilla, Wolfman Gorilla handle. And I've used that for the four or so times I've used this razor. But this time, I'm going to use this, uh, another titanium handle here. Um, this time I'm going to use uh, a longer uh, handle. So the Nasset, yep, here's the Nasset right here. Carefully cradling everything in my hand. I don't want to drop anything. It's 
and he did provide to protect that head against any markings from any handle anybody would want to use. He put that little nylon washer there, and so I'm definitely been keeping that in place. I'm broadcasting a little bit of a delay, and so I might actually send this razor out to him before my four or five shaves actually make it online. <laughs> so, but I have been keeping him up to date with my general reaction to how I'm in, enjoying this razor. Um, uh, the first couple of shaves were done on multiple days of growth and handled that very well. Not super smooth with some blades, but, uh, but in terms of the second and third pass, they're wonderful. Finally got around to shaving with just one day of growth most recently, and it was a wonderful shave. It was excellent. Just, it, it, it cruised through the hair easily and very comfortable, no irritation at all, and a great close cut. Um, so, I like it. I like it. Okay. Get my face wet. Now, I just finished doing the mail call video, and it was a live video. And so, uh, one of the things that I revealed was that I I now have, thanks to Black Friday and stumbling across a huge beauty supply store, I have a, a, a good dozen aftershaves to try. And so we're not lacking in that department. That's for, that's for sure. All right, so my face is wet, so we're getting those hairs to soften. This has not been pre-soaked or anything like that. I looked, it's rare to have me remember to look for my uh, soap formulations online first, but... In the past, I had used a 30-second load on this and gotten five passes of lather. So let's repeat that again. Hey, we're rounding off right now to a lovely round number. And so it'll be easy to go to the 30-second mark. This is a badger that's uh, the, the black line, the black band there is, is not thick. And so we know it's not a two-band. We know it's not a finest badger. And this thing is holding a lot of water. It's releasing a lot of uh, water here into my rinse bowl, actually. Um, okay, so there we go. We'll see if the brush is loaded enough. I'm going to turn it sideways and let some of that stuff dribble into my lather bowl. And uh, wow, that, that knot was holding so much water in it. You saw how I shook it out, and a lot came out, but there was still tons left in and amongst the bristles here and so i am very <laughs> the situation here is is very messy um i tell you what these these hard soaps i could totally live on just the hard soaps um some of them have interesting smells some of them are a little on the boring side but i just keep coming back to them you know like uh, like williams or mitchell's wool fat Mitchell's is not all that amazing of a scent, but I don't know. There's just something about whipping up a lather from a, a, a hard puck. I, I, maybe, maybe that's all there is to it. I don't know what the attraction is for me. There we go. A little kind of pre-wash on, on my face. And uh, I will tilt you down so you can watch the lather kind of come together here. So just to, while I'm doing this, just to kind of summarize uh, some of the Black Friday uh, things that I took advantage of, I, I bought a few little odds and ends from Maggard Razors. The uh, Spanish version of the Aqua Velva, uh, the blue cologne there, the aftershave. I think it's different than the, what we have here in America. I think it's the right one that I uh, favor. I got a couple of the Shavettes, one that holds the art, uh, kind of no-name Shavettes, and one of them is the CJB. One of them holds the Artist Club size blades, and the other one holds the Half DE size blades, so those will be fun to try out. And the Commissory means it's the kind that doesn't fold, and it's kind of got a Japanese in origin. I got the cream from just Simple Gillette, Lime Cream, just to try it out. It's a good, good price for the Black Friday deal, so I figured, hey, why not? Um, I got some aftershaves from, like I told you, the Grumatorium Sale and the Beauty Supply. I got Jerris Musk for men, uh, just a few dollars. I got the Clubman Panode Puck of Soap 
So I'll bring that to you at some point. I got some Thayer's Witch Hazel. I got the, um, the lavender flavor toner there. And then I also got the standard original. I've been using alcohol free up until now. So I'm looking forward to trying the alcohol version too. And as you can see, the lather is just coming together here. There's a good bit of water already in the mix. And so I think that's why it's, it's working together nicely. I got um, the beauty supply store gave me several different trial sizes of the Clubman series. Um, Cognac Neat, I actually got in a full size. I got Tequila Teas, which kind of has a coconut vibe that I don't like. I got some some Amber Spicy or something, Bur Brandy Spice maybe. Uh, some Gin something, We're looking forward to those. I got Maggard Damocles, which I'm looking forward to bringing to you guys soon. Uh, I got the soap and the EDP of that. I got Barrister and Man, Fougere Imperial, and the Aromatique, because Grumatorium had a crazy sale on that. Now, this has taken a bit to come together. It started off really soupy, but you can see now that we're looking good. Let's add a little bit of water. I've got a Declaration B13 brush. It's in a dogwood handle that I'm really looking forward to uh, bringing to you guys. B13 looks like a batch that I really favor, and so I wanted to pick up a uh, another brush that I, um, before that batch was, was hard to obtain because it is discontinued now. He's on 14 now, and 14 does not seem to be, uh, it seems to be a little bit more firm in the backbone department. While I probably would still like 14, I... I definitely want to take advantage of the 13 while it's available. And so I'll be bringing that to you. Uh, and I think that, oh, oh, and then the Sterling. Uh, I love some of the seasonal scents offered by Sterling. This time, Oro Valley, Fascali, uh, Carmichael, and uh, Smoky Grapefruit. Look like they'll be fun to use and try. I think, I mean, maybe we're done. Why don't we just try this out? I don't think it's a soap that's going to need tons of water. Uh, if we push it too far, it may kind of drop on us. And so uh, I don't think I want to do that. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Today's shave is going to be on a little bit more than a day's growth. I fully expected to be super comfy with this razor. That's how it's been treating me. And I think I'll just use the solid bar. Um, because I think I, I like, it might have a, a slightly more smooth feel, and I think I like that. So I am kind of feeling those hairs here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sense them to see what kind of experience they give me. They are moving out of the way easily. Some people might consider this a, yeah, I definitely think the people who don't, who say they don't like floppy brushes, they would not like this brush. However, um, while, while some parts of it are flopping over, I, it does present a pretty good feel. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a ropiness to it because, um, because it's kind of flopping over, so you're kind of feeling the sides of some of the bristles, but it's really pretty comfy. can see we are uh, kind of generating a little bit of lather there. Break that off before it falls on my shirt. The scent here is a nice medium strength and, and it's, uh, I since I like the scent, it's very enjoyable during the shave. Sometimes I'll do back and forth like that just to kind of keep an eye on the lather and see what does, see what it works, how it works and it looks like get an eye of the texture if you could if you do that probably add a little bit more water if I wanted I like this handle it's a nice size for me it's pearlized blue with kind of a, a cream or white colored ferrule there let's just kind of add a few drips of, of water into the brush
this lather doesn't look all that great in the bowl. Kind of looks a little bit airy, a little bit like it's got too much structure to it. But then, like right now, I've got it on my face and I kind of feel the creaminess. It just feels better on the face than it does looking at it in the bowl. And I think it just takes a little bit of work to kind of mature the lather and it transforms out of that airy stuff into what I have now. Because I mean, take a look at that, nice and creamy looking. Yeah. All right, we will commence the shave with the 75 Gap. Thank you, HD Shaves. It's been a blast trying this guy out. With the grain at first. The Nasset, we'll see how he works. If I would have had more time, I might have put the, uh, the 450 use Nasset in this one. And then uh, send it back to HD and he would have a razor that was part of the the big run of the of the of the 450 NASA. You can hear a little bit of the cutting there, but it feels nice and consistent, feels smooth, secure, it's got a nice grip on the blade. It's, and uh, the fact that I can feel the blade edge here makes me think that I, I would love to try even a 0.65 or at least a 0.7 and probably be happy with that too. I wonder how low I'd have to go to get to this magic smooth point where it's as smooth as it's, as it's going to be while still being as efficient as I need it to be to get me a nice close shave. I wonder where that point is. Well, felt great. No irritation and rinse. So yeah, this is not a soap to go out and buy because you want a performance lather. There are just better ones out there. Uh, but if you like this particular scent, then I think this is a, a good soap to use. And the uh, it sure seems like the formulation here is such that you're going to get a lot. You're going to get a lot of shaves for your money. And so even if it costs $30 for a puck of this, uh, I really believe that yeah, especially if you shave like I do, where you have really wet lathers and use a bowl, that'll help you to conserve. I'm pretty sure it would last a very long time. And that would not, by the time you added everything up in a cost per shave basis, it would not be an expensive soap. All right, now here's where the magic starts to happen because this little gap will just cut without... any problem at all and uh, without any kind of tugging or irritation just uh, to me it may it's lower than you know his standard range by quite a good bit but honestly I don't consider this a mild razor I consider this uh, probably a, uh, a medium I mean, you can, you can hear it. It's, it's uh, still got a little bit of blade feel to it. There were a couple of blades that I used that did stir up just a hint of, uh, of tenderness. So it's not a... It's not just an ultra smooth, you know, it's not like a Feather ASD2. Nothing like that at all. It's, I think it's just a nice balance, actually. So many of the vintage Gillettes seem to sit, my favorite ones seem to sit right at this point. A little bit of blade feel, lets you know you're shaving, but it's under control and you've got a lot of comfort. And so those, those things come together, the efficiency with the comfort into a really nice balance. The vintage aristocrats come to mind, the ones that look just like pieces of jewelry, you know, from the UK, that comes to mind exactly right here, like the 16 and the 15, for instance. Um, they hit at that, at that same point, kind of like this one does. And a little splash of water. So 
this razor has been giving me terrific close shaves even in my trouble spot right here um, there was there were one or two blades that just weren't quite made for this razor but by and large the uh, most of them have been terrific in this in this razor and I'm glad to put a NASA into it and I can say so far that that's a wonderful blade um, works very well with the razor and I'm enjoying this brush you know if I was you know, stuck with this brush. I don't think I'd have a problem with it. It's comfortable. It gets the job done. Now, if you need backbone for some reason, then you might find this one lacking, but I, I don't need backbone. I just need it to, I mean, as you can see, just 30 seconds and I have, I've got plenty of soap and it was a hard puck, an unsoaked, unbloomed hard puck. And just 30 seconds of work on it and I've got three passes plus probably two more so five passes of lather so obviously it picks up soap from the soap puck to itself easily all right last pass oh it's been a wonderful experience and the handle is working well uh, one of the things I like about the long handles uh, is not necessarily that you have leverage so that you can hold it like so um, and, and really guide it properly. Um, I like the fact that I can hold it in my central um, center of mass and have that not be quite so close to the head and it, it just feels um, more maneuverable. If I keep it in the center of mass like this, then it can glide over the bumps and contours of my face without giving me any kind of irritation. And the lather is being very slick. See, I could definitely use this lather uh, every day. Nice performance here, and I continue to enjoy the scent. During the shave here. So this ends the my COVID nose series. And it really has been fun revisiting. There have been a few that I revisited and said, well, I can just sell these or if they're really inexpensive, just, you know, give them away or something like that because they, I don't see any need to revisit them um, because they, they just don't offer the performance I want. And so they may be a little nostalgic or something like that, but um, if they don't perform well enough, then there are just too many good soaps to, to be using them instead of something nice. And so there we go. And let me tell you something interesting. And this I discovered by accident. So this is one of the T-BAM handles and it's titanium. And you can see how it's kind of got a, a, a diamond pattern here. I ordered one of these from the T-BAM eBay um, portal. And this looked cool, but I decided the one with the extra ridges in each diamond, I thought that might offer a better grip and I thought it looked, had an interesting look to it. But you know what I found? I found that those extra ridges actually prevented the uh, surface tension. It, it prevented me from having a good grip on the razor. Uh, it, uh, it bro it's like using knobby tires on, on, a, on a car or truck or motorcycle on the highway. It wasn't meant for that. There's less places to grab, less contact to, to have purchase on the road. Uh, if you're in dirt, it's a different story. You need to be able to dig, but on the road, you need more contact. And so that's why street tires have uh, a lot more flat patch to them to have good contact. And so that's what this turned out to be. This turned out to be the street tire. And so I thought the one with the hatching, the etching and <clears throat> Uh, checking on the individual diamonds here, I thought that would give me more grip on the razor, but it did not. It actually had the opposite effect. And so I learned. And I saw this one online, found it on a good deal. I think I got it off secondhand, somebody. And I thought, oh, well, I know I want to try that one. And sure enough, I have excellent grip even when wet. And I, I just wouldn't have guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that less knurling would give me more grip. Um, 
time. So there we go. How about that little learning experience there? The Nasset worked very well uh, in this razor. Face feels great. I don't have any irritation. We get a good rinse on here. So I took the brush in and cleaned it up. Now a nice thing about this kind of brush is it's not a super dense brush. It's not like um, you know this stator that's just got bristles jam packed in there. Not only is it larger but it's denser too. Um, this paladin is a lot denser as you can see and it's a smaller knot. And uh, the nice thing about this kind of brush, just because it's not dense doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's different. Okay? And you'll definitely have guys online that'll talk about uh, it as if density is the thing you should go for. Well, that just happens to be their preference. Okay? A nice thing about these lower density brushes is the softness and the ease of splay. The comfort that you get. Also the ease of cleaning because there's less space uh, because there's more space between the bristles not only can it hold more water it can hold more lather pretty good features but it also cleans more easily water can get in there as you're rinsing and cleaning the brush out it's a lot easier to do it in this kind of brush it's quicker to do it in this kind of brush than it is those those dense ones that i just showed you so uh yeah the tips um, you, I, I wanted to show you guys the, the color. We can learn something about badger knots a little bit. You can, you can see that it does seem to be a three band, similar to this one over here, which is a high mountain white. Um, but if you look at the tips, see the, uh, obviously this one could be more spread out and that would probably look more like this one. But I believe that even if we were to do that, you, we, we could see how these tips are a little more, more white. And so it could be a batch difference just between that group of hairs, or it could be that this is simply a different, a slightly different grade of hair. It might not be the high mountain white like this one is. And so these are not luxuriously soft like you'd get with a silver tip. And so what I might guess is this could be a silver tip, just maybe not something that you'd classify as a premium silver tip or a really soft silver tip. Um, it could be just a, a normal three-band badger. Um, it's possible that, uh, that it's that. Um, it could be a high mountain white that just happens to look a little different and maybe not be quite as soft. I've definitely encountered that. I've, there, there's a range of high mountain whites. And um, the sterling high mountain white that I have the, uh, and another one are super plush and soft and those tips are crazy soft. And there's a couple other ones like maybe the one from Umo and another one that are a little bit on the, like this, where they have a little bit more tip feel. Um, this one may be kind of right in between. If I had to guess, I might say this is a high mountain white or maybe kind of a, a lower grade silver tip. In any case, you can see it's just easy to move around. It uh, is nice and plush. I enjoyed the experience. If I had to choose between a, um, a firm two band. I mean, look at that. Whereas with this one, of course, this one's dry. But see, because of that density, this guy's got so much easier, easier give. This is a dense knot here. And so he's just, he doesn't have any give. And if I had to choose between those two brushes and going on a trip, I would choose this one every day. Um, so well, it was fun to use. Uh, Jeff Huck brush here from Bristle Brushworks, and uh, I like it. I like it. So I'll have to decide if I like the handle enough, uh, if I like the brush knot enough. If I want to keep both the same, then I can keep it in my kind of collection here. If I don't think the brush knot offers me anything that I want to have in my uh, repertoire, then I could yank the knot out of there if I do like the handle. Um, and then put something maybe nicer in the handle. And uh, I found it nice and ergonomic. It's kind of a boring shape slightly, um, but it worked very well. It was comfortable, uh, and so it's a good shape, ergonomically speaking. Uh, I do like the appearance of kind of the ivory, and it does have a pearlized blue, and I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there are kind of uh, veins of, of uh, green as well, so it's kind of pearlized blue-green. 
So it's uh, it's got its own kind of prettiness to it. So, all right. Very good. Oh, now the aftershave. And see that soap. I'm getting wafts of it right now. It's it's staying resident. It's uh, I'm enjoying um, uh, experiencing it after the shave. Now I'm gonna try to clean off the <laughs> the thing here. Use my towel. I had to had to tape a little piece of paper under the bottom so that I'd in case I ever forgot what soap this was. And so I hope that stays kind of waterproof. And then we'll just take, and I just think this looks great. I'm a sucker for a, uh, a good looking soap container, especially the traditional kind, like uh, the ceramic one from Mitchell's Wool Fat. And now we get to choose what, um, what post shave to use. I have not used very much water just 10 milliliters approximately. And I think that's because that brush held a lot more water in it than I expected. And so I wouldn't be surprised if I used more like 15 milliliters of water total, you know, if I would have emptied it the normal amount that I, 15 might be the value, but uh, so that's just a lesson learned. It holds a lot of water. All right, uh, so let's look around for an aftershave. Thanks to the Black Friday deals, I have tons of options. I do not have any kind of repair uh, that, I, that I need to have done. The, my face feels great. There's no tenderness. Nice close shave here. The uh, soap hasn't dried me out, so that's good. Sometimes those kind of uh, third-party soaps where they've contracted with somebody, um, that's, that can be sometimes be an effect. All right, well, here we are. This is a little sample. I think a three ounce, uh, 50 milliliters, 1.7 ounces, fluid ounces. And it's Gents Gin from Pinot Clubman. And this is the sample size I found in that big beauty supply store. I found some of the, um, some of the kind of the normal size like this. And then I, um, they had equal versions. They had the normal size as well as the sample size. And so I bought a couple of the normal size and then some that I wanted, I felt like were more of a risk, I bought in the sample size. So let's try out Gents Gin today. I've already tried the, uh, the one called Cognac Tea, Cognac Neat. Really enjoyed that one. A little bit of a boozy nature to it. I think it probably would go well with this soap. It's a different accord, but I think it would be complimentary. All right, so Clubman does not really offer tons in terms of skin food here. So you're going to get sometimes uh, some sting. I didn't quite get enough out of the container there. We'll just kind of let that rest and see after the alcohol burns off. I can see what it smells like. The notes on the bottle say a masculine scent with a gin signature, lime and cedar notes. So I'm getting the lime definitely. Now a gin signature, what does that mean? Isn't isn't gin like the same thing as vodka? It's it's almost odorless, but with gin they added uh, some kind of herbs. Uh, isn't that what gin is? Definitely getting the the lime, the citrus vibe, the um, lime, now cedar. Not getting any cedar. But it's really kind of a, a nice little lime scent. There's one called Citrus Musk that they they have at the Club Man, and I think I don't like that one as much. It's it's the the lime is kind of in your face uh, and and strong, and and the musk kind of helps it to be more so. Whereas this one, it's more palatable. It's a, a gentler lime. Lime's definitely what's in the front. 
uh, for me at least. Cedar? Okay, okay, I think I can pick out the cedar. But it's, it's kind of in the background. Hmm. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Now, the trouble is we have tons of great aftershaves. Um, and colognes. I've got a bunch of sterling colognes. I've got uh, southern witchcrafts colognes. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I mean, here's Cerberus from uh, Declaration Grooming. And I mean, holy cow, I've got so many. Uh, that, that makes me wonder, does this have a place in my collection? So that's something to think about. Just because it's good doesn't mean it deserves a place, right? If you have a big collection. All right, but that's good to, if I had, if I was, uh, you know, out traveling and I didn't have any aftershave anywhere, um, and, and I was able to get that, I'd be happy. And it seems to be, a, at first glance, at first smell, seems to be pretty nice. I'm enjoying it. Well, that's today's shave. Um, and of course, the alcohol burn there subsided very quickly. And, uh, and we're good. There we go. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I hope there's been something in this video to help you out. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit behind on my broadcasting, and so it might be a, a week before you guys uh, see this video from when it was recording, but hey, that's just, I'll, I'll catch up eventually. Um, and there we go. Uh, all right. Hey, have a good night. Take care.